Hey everyone, this is the Drive to School podcast. I'm Pastor Goodman. I'm the content executive here at Higher Things and joining me today, you know him, you love him. It is it's Pastor Richard. How you doing? Hey, it's good to see you, Harrison. Good to see you too, my man. How, uh, how things been going? Uh, we're full swing of confirmation. And so we had our confirmation students out last night. And uh, I'll tell you what, uh, there was a time and a place where I kind of sometimes struggled with confirmation, but the older I've gotten, the more I just, it's one of the highlights of my week. And just to just to hang out with the youth and, and just be... Um, yeah, it's good. And just good to return to our solid theology and see them grasp it for, you know, maybe the first time or reinforce something that they 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 haven't understood before. Uh, mm. So it's just good. So we had pizza last night and cookies and lots of junk food. And it was and we did our orientation and we had vespers and it was just organized chaos. It was great. That's that's the life of the church, though. I, I really do think it's it's the, the fun part when you actually get to see people who are, are finally getting their eyes kind of opened up to the stuff They you, you can sort of see when the light bulbs go off when they're interested in it. Um, it's it's a lot of fun. I'm a fan. Yeah. Of it. Yeah. So it's it's kind of nice, you know, the, the fall time you kind of get into a, there's a church calendar of the church, obviously, but then there's also seasons for the church. And and now that we're kind of in uh, two two fun seasons, confirmation kind of time starting and then also football season, you know, and it's the cool, crisp air here in North Dakota and uh, fall is really great. It's hoodie weather and it's not too cold where you're shaking too bad, but it's not hot. Uh, it's just it's just it's just a good time of the year. All the Midwesterners just come alive. It's it's it's, it's my gem, too. <laughs> <laughs> So um, we are uh, uh, today we're, we, we answer what does Jesus say about uh, because there's all this stuff that, that goes on um, and we, we kind of even talked about it a little bit just right now with with sort of the confirmants and stuff but what does Jesus say about Christian life? Yeah, uh, I would say it's 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 returning, returning okay. and abiding, uh, being super glued to Jesus, staying put, and uh, as you know, I mean, there's this this uh, popular phrase in this hymn. In our hymnal, it says we're prone to wander, we're prone to leave the God that we love. And mm. so, like like uh sheep, and so one of my one of my really close friends, he actually raises sheep here in North Dakota. And we jokingly call them sheepies, you know. So you look at all the little sheepies, and and uh so what happens to a sheep? You know, the sheep will will wander to another pasture land to get other green grass, and, and the little sheep will leave. And and we've talked about this too with my my buddy. He said that sometimes what happens with sheep, they'll be eating some food and the, the whole herd will leave and then they'll just kind of look around. And they freak out. They're all by themselves. Now, a good sheep is going to go nuts wanting to what? Get back to the fold. Right, sure. Man, how I wish that was us as Christians, but our nature is kind of different from that, which is kind of weird because as Christians, we we're prone to wander, we're prone to leave the God that we love. We just we want to go to that extra pasture land. We 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 leave. And so much of Christianity in America, we, we view it where we have Christ and we're with Christ, but then somehow they tell us that we have to move beyond Christ to a higher and better and bigger things. But really, when it comes down to it, when we look at the the gospels and we hear about Jesus, he's saying what? Uh, I'm the shepherd, uh, and you are to be what? To follow me, to listen to me, to stay put. He also has this other parable, right, where he talks about I'm the vine, you are the branches. In other words, what does a branch need to do? Uh, get disconnected from the vine and go be its own independent, autonomous thing, or to stay put, connected to the vine. We're always to stay connected, but that's the problem with us, our simple nature. We like to wander. We like to leave. And so the problem is not that we have to go bigger and better to grander things as Christians, but we just have to stay put, not move, stay with Jesus. It makes sense because I mean, our, our confirmants know this too. Like the answer to 95% of our questions is, is Jesus. So like, why wouldn't Christian life also surround our, uh, uh, well, Jesus, uh, if, if sort of the point and practice of your faith is to not need Jesus anymore, you're probably doing it wrong. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, <laughs> it's, it's, it, when it comes to Jesus, yeah, it's, it's just thinking of Hebrews, right? Uh, he talks in the, in the book of Hebrews, the author, and get to chapter five and chapter six. Um, he's talking about moving on uh, to to the deeper things of Christ. So it's not moving away from Christ, it's moving into Christ and understanding Christ even more. And so this this life is not, you know, when we get to be in our 70s and 80s that we're independent, super spiritual stars, you know, super apostles, right? Uh, right. That we got it all figured out. The older we get, uh, the more we realize we need Jesus. And so it's no different from, you know, talking to a six-year-old, Jesus loves me, this I know. And when you're 75, Jesus loves, loves me, this I know. And mm -hmm. staying put. Um, but yeah, again, that, that whole press in, in our culture right now, so many American churches, and even us Lutherans can be guilty of it, where we, we, we take the person who is connected to Jesus 
And that's somehow not good enough. And so then we have to what? We have all these adjectives and adverbs. We got to go deeper. We got to go higher. We got to um, go more. Um, you know, we, we got to have, and so it's this, this idea where I'm here, but that's not good enough. We got to launch up higher and, or move somewhere else. And as a result, it moves us away from Christ. And man, when we move away from Christ, we're like that little sheep without a flock, without a shepherd. And then we realize we're alone. And, uh, but God be praised that uh, he seeks us out and he drags us back to the fold uh, in repentance and faith and to be centered right where we need to be centered, right in our baptisms. Absolutely. And that's, that's kind of a law gospel thing too, because as long as we're, we're in Christ, we're receiving from Christ because he's always giving to us. Uh, and so what we do then is, is when we sort of take Christ out of that and, and we, we sort of end up by ourselves, we, we sort of have all of the trappings of Christianity, but none of the gospel of it. Uh, because we've taken away the, the source of the gospel, which is Jesus. That means we'll, we'll, we'll talk about, you know, not sinning so much anymore, which is good. We should try to not sin so much anymore. But if, if it's not sin so much so that we don't need Jesus anymore, well, that's, that's works righteousness. And that's the death that we, well, that's the death that he found us in. Or, or if it's witnessing about Christ, like go out and get 10 more sheep. Um, well, again, if, if you're doing that, uh, witness is good. You should share peace of Christ with your neighbor, especially those in need of, of actual peace in this world. God knows it's dark enough down here. But when we when we sort of take Jesus out of that, all again, we have is, is a law that very quickly turns into a pyramid scheme. Um, and in all of it, we forgot the whole source, the root, the, 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 the vine that we would be the branches of. Yeah. What does he say? He says in that, that analogy there, that parable of the vine and the branches, apart from you can do what? Nothing. Nah. Nothing. Nada, right? Apart from mm-hmm. Jesus, we're nothing. And, uh, but boy, how do we like to think that, uh, well, give an example like that, um, that phrase you always see on coffee mugs and, and t-shirts, you know, I can do all things through him who strengthens me. And unfortunately we put the emphasis on the wrong syllable, right? The wrong yeah. syllable. It's like, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Uh, no, I think it, we should be reading the other way. I can do all things through him who strengthens me. And so it's the strength of Christ that allows us to endure in good times and in bad because the strength of Christ is for us. Uh, not that I can do all things through him who strengthens me quietly. Uh, no, the emphasis is all, always on Christ, always returning to Jesus. He is the source and the fountainhead of everything for us, the forgiveness of sins, life, and salvation. Right, and that, that also means then it, that it's, it's Christ's will that, that actually has the strength too. If it's Christ who strengthens us, then it's Christ who strengthens us towards the things that he would call good. Um, it, it's, it's not sort of, if you have enough Jesus, you can, you can do anything. It's, it's a really simple task, like turn into a dinosaur right now. Um, and, and then you sort of have to say, all right, so maybe God has different plans. And he, he actually makes those very clear. They're not simply that you would move onward and upward and away from him, that you would turn into a dinosaur, that you would chase after your idols, that you would do any of the your wants, but that you would simply be near him, that, that you would actually abide in Christ. That takes all of the strength in the world. Think about it. Think about how many things try and pull you away from Jesus. Sin, death, the power of the devil, the world, all of these things are trying to rip you away from Jesus, that, that we can simply even abide in him, that we can return to him. That, that is Christ who is strengthening us towards his will, which is that we would receive forgiveness, life, and salvation. Yeah. I mean, this, this, this idea of Christianity and, and, and the, this Christianity that's taught to us, um, is so contrary to our world. Our world is always about going to get something. So uh, the the marketing schemes of this world, they they raise up discontentment, right? And so I just got a text this morning about the new I4, I, iPhone 14. And then it's also it's like, man, is my iPhone not good enough? And like, well, maybe it's not good enough. Now I have to what? Go get something new. And so this world is always about stirring discontentment that you're not... Uh, you're not in a position where you have everything, so you have to go get something more. And then once you get that something more, then guess what? Everything's going to be great and happy. You're going to be secure. And then once you get that something more, then what do they do? They stir it up. You have to get something more again. So you're always chasing that carrot on the end of the stick. Christianity, though, is you have all good things in Christ. You have every spiritual blessing in the heavenly realm in Christ Jesus. You have it, period. You have good doctrine in the, in the scriptures and his holy writ for you. And so it's not that you got to go get more Jesus or that you have to go get more good doctrine or you have to go on some sort of venture to seek uh, to obtain something that you don't have. We already have it right now. We have Christ and his forgiveness of sins. We have the word and sacrament. We have his holy writ and his holy word, his good doctrine. And so the calling for us is to abide, stay put, guard the sound doctrine that's been given to us and trusted to us. Uh, don't wander off. Don't be one to be prone to wander and leave the God that we love. And when we do, pr- when we are prone to wander, when we do leave, it's in repentance, right? Repentance and faith to re- be, be returned back to the center of where we are tucked into our baptisms, connected to Jesus, abiding with him. 
perfect. That's the Christian life right there. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks, Harrison. Good to see you. You too. Have a good one, man.